I, I would say the theme is 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 building and sort of new beginnings. So new beginnings for the every single young lad I spoke to on the Campbellford Rebels this past weekend when I was up skating on New Year's um, with Councillor Giddings and Mayor Crate. Um, they're getting a new arena, a new home for the Rebels. My understanding is they're under new ownership and we're going to see a real new rebrand up there. That matters for an entire a generation and for, for families in that community. Brand new rec center. New beginnings for the growing community of Asphodel Norwood that's growing at, at the rate of 300%. They got a new industrial park thanks to servicing from our government. They Farmers now can get uh, modern combines and equipment onto their farms thanks to our expansion of Centerline Road. Um, new beginnings with their new rec center, the, the addition, which incorporates a fully accessible, a brand new gym. So for those in wheelchair or with any sort of physical impairments, you now can fully uh, participate in the community in which you live. You couldn't, Mark, just a year ago. So new beginnings for that community, new beginnings for the new arena at, at King Edward Park in Brighton, uh, new pickleball courts, uh, a whole area there that was just an arena when I was first elected. Today, pickleball courts. Today, you've got um, food trucks there. It's a real community hub. New beginnings um, in, uh, in Keene, where they have a brand new Millennium Room, a brand new expansion to their arena, a brand new senior center here in Port Hope for our seniors um, who built this province and who deserve respect. They've got uh, funding at the pickleball courts in, in um, or at the, sorry, lawn bowling in Coburg. They've got new pickleball courts in Port Hope, a brand new senior center. So it's, it's new beginnings, uh, really, everywhere you look in this riding, we have made significant investments that are quite literally building a stronger Ontario. And I, I'm very proud uh, of that because rural Ontario was left behind by the Liberals and no longer under, under this government. And I'm, I'm very proud of these, of these significant investments across our, our riding. And these are physicians that yes, have locums and that they do they do practice in our hospitals anyways, but also have clinics like when like not to get graphic, but I'll use a personal example. When when I had a colon issues, I went to a clinic with a specialist that he has in a Coburg. It's not at the hospital. It's it's it was actually at the Fleming building in Coburg. Um, it's the same principle, you know, th th there are existing spaces that are there anyways. Um, let's let's leverage it. I'll give us a, a silly analogy. How many community centers, rotaries, lion's halls, uh, masons uh, have kitchens? How many of them have kitchens? Uh, almost all. And I, I joked with, you know, with Campbellford and I said, you know, we're, we're funding the new the new rotary hall. But but how often is it actually used? How often is that kitchen used or does it sit idle? Think of how many meals people need in our community and all these kitchens that we're paying for the taxpayer, uh, Budley Arena, uh, every, every place we look, they have community kitchens, many of them with industrial style kitchen equipment. How often are they actually used? And so what we're saying very practically is how often are these community clinics actually used and hospitals as well? We're paying for them to expand their hours um, so that uh, so that more people I can have access to surgery. So I think th th that those are, that's the, I think it's a good question you asked, Mark. And I, and I hope in the answer you're, you're saying it's, it's a practical approach of saying they're existing. People are there anyways, let's just maximize it and not maximize it with sort of complex, uh, with a high acuity of need type care, but the day stuff, hip and knee cataracts, like th the alternative it may not be the solution for everybody. I think a lot of people watching have called into this office and applauded what we're doing. Some watching, and, and this message is directly to them who are skeptical. The alternative, and I used Annabelle's example, the alternative is their care, their condition gets worse. That was the status quo in Ontario. And they end up demonstrably changing their quality of life in the long run. And that costs more to the system, that costs more to taxpayers. So, you know, I, I think it's a it's a practical solution that is working. Is it the end? No, we've got a lot more 
uh, we still have yet to do, Mark. But I mean, the alternative of having people languish for years and the acuity of their need, getting to the point where they're practically immobile and it's changing their lives, like that's not an answer either, especially when we got people waiting to get into long-term care. Like that's not an answer. People want quality of life and the faster they get care, the better it is in the long run so that they don't get a, a morbidity or, or high acuity of needs in the long run.